make sense people all right so this is now the incremental picture now we need to make the real amplifier so what uh, what we do what uh, what should we do we should bias it we pick our you know we can pick any one of the uh, the ways so uh, what do you want to pick all right okay so you know if you want to do the least amount of acrobatics after you bias the circuit then there must be as much common between the with the bias circuit as well as the i mean if you i mean ideally uh, if you just simply replace all the uh, voltage sources in the bias network with short circuits if that leads to this picture then th there is nothing else to be done right so even though it's possible to pick any of the bias arrangements and make it look like a common drain right what is what do you think which of which of the the bias techniques that we discussed do you think will be uh, you know within quotes the easiest uh, in this particular case yeah so basically yeah you know you might recognize that uh, we already talked about bias circuits where the drain was uh, connected to vgd which basically means that in the incremental circuit it is already ground right so if the drain is connected to vdd then we uh, we sense the current in the source correct all right and uh, uh, the feedback i mean evidently we want the incremental voltage to come to the gate of the transistor so we don't want the bias to go and change the gate voltage so the only other choice is to sense so the, the easiest bias circuit therefore will be one where you sense current in the source and and uh, let me remind you again why we, do, we are do, why are we doing this if we sense current in the source it means that the drain must be connected to a constant potential right so which in the incremental network will automatically be ground which is what we want all right now the uh, we can sense at the source and feedback either at the gate or the source which of them will be easier source because the input needs to be coupled to the to the gate all right so one way of doing it therefore is to do this so this is irf all right so this biases the transistor so this is vdd this is r2 this is r1 they bias the transistor all right so what all do we need to now uh, you know make it look incrementally like uh, uh, the uh, bcvs shown on the left pardon yeah we i mean you know uh, mentally now you should be able to look at the bias network and and see the incremental picture right the sources if you take that bias network and convert it into a uh, it's incremental equivalent the drain is drain is grounded sources sources open right and uh, we see that we are missing uh, the input source as well as the as well as the output load so uh, so how do we couple the input any suggestion well the same old same old so this is vi this is rs we have the infinite capacitor Does it make sense? All right. And uh, what do we do about the load? Through a capacitor. RL. All right. So this is your. This is a common. 
drain amplifier. Okay, and uh, so how do we uh, figure out uh, the swings? Oh, by the way, before we go to swings, uh, what comment can you make about the uh, input resistance now? The input resistance for incremental signals is R1 parallel, R2 which must be chosen to be much larger than Rs. Okay. So, even though the incremental part of the network uh, the ideal small signal model that we created had an infinite input resistance that is that is the picture on the left right. The moment you add this biasing circuitry you can see that unfortunately the input resistance which was truly infinite has now become finite after all it is R 1 parallel R 2. Okay. And uh, what comment can you make about the output resistance? That we have seen already, what is it? 1 over g n and must be chosen to be much smaller than R L, 1 by R L sorry. And uh, what comment can you make about the gain? We have seen this again already, it is nothing but g m R L over 1 plus g m. I would say that that finishes the small signal part of the whole story. Now, uh, the next thing is to figure out the swing limits okay. and uh, to do that well uh, the first thing to do is compute the operating point. So, given R 1 and R 2 we will be able to find the gate voltage V g and uh, given the properties of the transistor and I ref we will be able to find the the source potential right. So, let us take an example. So, let us say uh, I ref is 1 milli ampere mu n C ox W by L uh, is uh, 2 milli amperes per volt square ok V t is 1 volt V d d is 10 volts okay. and uh, let us assume that R 1 is R 2 which is uh, say 2 meg and R s is uh, 1 k all right and uh, R l is 10 k. Okay, let us use this as an example to figure out what the swing limits are. So, first things first uh, what, do, what are we supposed to do? Calculate the operating point let us do that quickly what is V g 5 volts uh, what is V g s of the transistor? Yeah, VGS minus VT is 1 volt. So, VGS is 2 volts. So, what is the uh, source potential quiescent potential? What is the quiescent potential of the source? 3 volts. Okay. Is the transistor in saturation? Yeah, and yeah, that is because well the drain potential is higher than the gate potential there is no risk of ok. What is the now let us start with the incremental voltage what is the incremental voltage at the gate what is the input resistance 1 meg ohm is that much larger than 1 kilo ohm or not yes. So, the incremental voltage at the gate is 
approximately V i. Okay. What comment can you make about the incremental voltage at the source terminal? What is the GM of the transistor therefore? Two milli watt ohms. Yeah, so uh, uh, GM is basically mu n C ox W by L. That's basically two milliamps per volt square times one volt, which is two milliamps per two milliamps per volt, which is one over half a k. Correct. So, is uh, GMRL being what is GM the value of GMRL? Yeah. So, GMRL is is 20. So, what is the incremental voltage at the output uh, at the source or at the load? V i times 20 by 21. So, this voltage at the source is going to be plus V i times 20 over 21. Okay. So, when the input uh, becomes uh, uh, very large, so let us say uh, v, uh, the input is some a sin omega t, the question is what is the largest input when the transistor goes, when the input goes up in other words in the positive half of the input cycle. What comment can we make about the transistor? Is it uh, going towards uh, cutoff or is it going uh, 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 towards the drive region? Triode region, why? The drain potential is fixed, the gate potential is going up. So, what is the maximum voltage A max 1? Uh, which uh, which you can use before the transistor gets into the triode region. How will we figure that out? How will we figure that out? Yeah, triode boundary. What is that? The gate potential becomes one threshold above the drain, or the drain goes one threshold below the gate. In this case, the drain is not going anywhere, so it's the gate which is going somewhere. So, the gate potential becomes one, one threshold above the drain. So, basically uh, the highest potential of the gate therefore, is 5 plus A max 1 and that must be equal to 10 plus V t, very good, that is one volt plus V t which is implies A max 1 is what? 6 volts. Is that clear? Very good. Now, what about uh, when, the, when the input uh, is in the goes negative, in other words, when you are in the negative half of the input cycle? What comment can you make about uh, uh, the transistor? What is the incremental current through the transistor? Can somebody tell me? Pardon? No? What is the incremental current? I mean, uh, stare at this picture. So, this is V i, this is V o, what is the incremental current to the uh, in the drain of the transistor? It is not G m times V i. Remember that the transistor current is the difference uh, depends on the incremental gate source voltage. The gate is definitely at V i, but the source is not at ground, right. Okay. So, basically, uh, what comment can you make about the uh, drain current? I mean, there are two ways of doing this. You know that uh, VO is nothing but GM, GM RL by 
1 plus gm rl times vi and uh, therefore uh, what comment can you make about vi minus vo it is what is the current in the drain incremental current in the drain therefore g m times v i minus v o that is nothing but g m over 1 plus g m r l times v i which can be written as this by r l which is seen to be nothing but v o by r l and then somebody will say oh well this is obvious why yeah well whatever current flows out here uh, flows here that is V O by R L must be coming from the drain because the gate current is 0. Is that clear people? Okay. So, what is the incremental current uh, in the transistor uh, you know as we uh, uh, in the in our example? What is the quiescent current? 1 milliampere and the incremental current is plus V i. So, A sin omega t times 20 by 21 that is the output voltage that divided by R l which is 10 k. So, the 1 over k becomes a milliampere okay, and this goes away. So, what is the smallest current that can flow through the transistor? So, what comment can you make about the current? In the positive half of the input cycle is the current increasing or decreasing? The current is increasing. In the negative half of the input cycle the current is decreasing or going down. So, uh, uh, towards what region uh, is the transistor heading cut off. So, the minimum current is therefore, 1 minus 2 a by 21 milliampere's a max 2 milliampere's. Right, which means A max 2 is what is the limit for cutoff? Ten point five volts. Does it make sense? Okay. So, which what is the largest amplitude you can put in before the transistor gets messed up 6 volts. So, A max is the minimum of A max 1 and A max 2 which is 6 volts. All right. Next thing is uh, you know the infinite capacitors. So, let us assume that uh, uh, we, know, we know all the resistors uh, you know uh, already. So, for this capacitance C 1 right uh, and assuming that omega is the lowest frequency of interest, uh, how will we choose C 1? The capacitive impedance should be less than or equal to I mean not less than or equal to must be way smaller than the Thevenin resistance looking across the terminals of the capacitor correct and what is the Thevenin resistance looking across the terminals of the capacitor R s plus R 1 parallel R 2 which is about uh, R 1 parallel R 2 is about a mega ohm uh, R s is a kilo ohm. So, it is roughly a mega ohm. Okay. So, the impedance of the capacitor must be much smaller than 1 mega ohm at the lowest frequency of operation which if we assume that to be omega then 1 over omega C 1 
must be much smaller than 1 mg. Hmm? What about the output capacitance? The capacitance at the output. Yeah. So, uh, what is the output resistance? 1 over gm. So, one of the reactance of the capacitor at the uh, which is coupling the load to the transistor must be uh, the its reactance at omega must be much smaller than 1 over gm parallel or plus plus uh, rl and in any case uh, uh, you know uh, if you want a good common drain amplifier then the rl is going to be much larger than 1 over gm the output resistance is much smaller than the load that's what it means so basically it pretty much uh, boils down to the reactance of the capacitance must be much smaller than the load resistor 10k so which do you think will be the larger capacitor at the input side or the output side the output side will need a much larger capacitor does it make sense people All right. So, this basically completes the, the incremental voltage controlled voltage source with a gain of 1. Okay. So, can uh, uh, if you want to try to make a voltage controlled voltage source with a gain of say 5, right? Uh, do you think it is possible? Why? No, no, here of course, yeah, I mean. we started off with uh, you know our basic idea which was i which was uh, you know uh, proportional to now if you want this gain to be if we want v not to be uh, if we want v not to be say uh, 5 times v i, how would we do this? Let us say you had a variable current source like before, what will we do? What will we compare? We have to compare v naught by 5 to v i. Okay, so, and then, so therefore, you have a current pumping here. So, what will it be? How will you generate v i by 5, v o by 5? Okay, so, basically some ratio of resistors r 1 and say uh, 4 r 1 and r 1 and then we have to compare which two where will you put the voltmeter we have to put the voltmeter here ok all right now can you uh, you know uh, can you identify the transistor Okay, think about it, we will discuss it tomorrow.